Yeah, you can get real skin. Let's talk about the procurement of real skin for a moment. Actually not in the French Riviera, despite the way this might seem. Uh, we're in Mountain View, California. Jim is also very envious of the casual dress code here. I am. I, I've read that you usually wear flip-flops, or that you often do, but not, not today. No, it was cold today. It is cold, and you have a cold. I do. You are the head of Google's Life Sciences Lab, and you are yourself not well. Why, well, why has no one cured the common cold yet? I would rather cure cancer. I'll do the colds after cancer. Because you know you're going you're gonna to get through the, the sniffles. It would be terrible to lose you to this. We'd have to go to uh, Bing's life sciences lab. Yeah. The central thesis of what we're trying to do at, at Google Life Sciences is we're trying to change medicine from being episodic and reactive, like I go to the doctor when my arm hurts, to proactive and preventative. So you have arms and this is how you diagnose breast cancer. What these arms are is the model systems in which we're trying to detect small particles that flow through the arm. So imagine that you swallow a pill and that pill has small things called nanoparticles in it. Nanoparticles are very tiny particles, about 2,000 of them can fit inside a red blood cell, but they're decorated on their surface with markers that attach to cancer cells. We then have them circulate through your whole body looking for those cells and we collect them in the superficial vasculature of the arm with a magnet and you ask them what they saw. And you would basically wear this like a Fitbit and you would take a pill maybe twice a month that would make your red blood cells light up. Hopefully it would make only the cancer cells light up. When they were casting and making these arms, they had to make them out of materials that behave like skin, have the same autofluorescence and biochemical components of real arms. And you use some real skin at some points, right? Human skin. Do the people know that their skin is going onto the market? Oh yeah. Their skins can go to first use in medical schools or other research programs. You have to account for people of uh, different ethnicities, different skin tones, different thicknesses of skin in the literal sense because people will say sometimes that you have thick skin that is a metaphor but you oh, that's what it means it's important for us to understand how how these nanoparticles and the perception of these nanoparticles perform with people with very different characteristics it's just like breaking bad Crazy. <laughs> Help me out, Catherine. So we are in one of the uh, Google Life Sciences labs. You can point at anything you particularly like. Uh, well, that's a computer. So one of the things we realized at the beginning when we started this project was that we needed to have a better way of understanding what distinguishes a healthy person from an unhealthy person. You need to know what normal is. Exactly. We need to understand the baseline. So could you potentially tell Jim if he was normal? I think we already know that I'm normal. <laughs> but if I did want to know if I was normal, what is the way that I could maybe check that out? We're going to shine in laser, and then we're going to see the signal that is emitted from, uh, from your skin. OK. OK, so this is zero. Okay. Right? Now we'll go back to our normal. And then are you ready for the truth? So you're a little bit, a little bit lower than normal. What does that mean? It means that he I'm needs sure. to spend uh, more time in the sun. <laughs> really? Yes. How far are we from a realistic implementation of this? We're making good progress, but the journey is long and hard. So I think we will get there. And I hope it's years, not decades. A lot of medicine has become incremental, looking for the slightly better thing. And at, at Google X, the, the, the thesis is to try to do something that's you know, logarithmically better. And I think that's alluring to people. I think it's curious for people to go, oh, okay, let me try to do something that's 
profoundly different. We're in an area of reaction to potential invasions of privacy. Do people want to be monitored all the time? Do people say, it would be weird to have uh, this particles flowing through my body that are constantly tracking me? Yeah, it's way weirder to have cancer cells floating through your body that are constantly trying to kill you. Um, That's a great answer. Yeah. yeah. That's very strong. Your magnet experiments are far beyond what I've been able to achieve in my apartment. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Aetna. We have a YouTube channel we would love it if you subscribe to. Uh, I'll be DJing a party um, in Brooklyn on the 14th at 4 a.m. Jim, I don't, I don't think you're DJing a party. Are you really DJing a party? It's like pencil. There's interest.